Now let's get to Australian Strategic Materials. Shares are soaring after it received a $6.5 million grant for its Dubbo project in New South Wales. So let's find out what that funding will go to. And ASM's Managing Director, Rowena Smith, joins us now. Rowena, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So this is, is this part of the Critical Minerals uh, Government Grant Program? It is indeed. It's the second tranche of uh, funding that the Australian Federal Government is directing towards critical minerals projects in order to really support the development of this industry within Australia. And we're very pleased to have uh, received a commitment for a $6.5 million grant uh, for our Dubbo project. We'll be putting that money towards the continued optimization of the design for our ESG performance in particular, we're really looking at how we can further optimize our carbon and uh, water footprint for that project. Uh, we already had that work in plan this year, but it's certainly going to assist us to be able to progress that quickly. Okay, so um, as far as what's happening with the site at this time, does this then speed up the timeline significantly? Well, I think um, the project is already very well advanced. We have got uh, all of our approvals already in place and we have got our design work very advanced. And we're at the point now where we're speaking to offtake partners and investors in order to be able to secure the funding. And we're on a target at the moment in order to have our offtakes in place by the end of this year and then uh, reach our financial investment decision by the end of next year. What this funding enables us to do is to, to bring forward in our development work this final piece of optimization around our carbon and water management in particular, which is really important when we're talking to our offtake partners and investors. So we see this as a critical piece of work to supporting that securing of funding for the project. Yep, yeah, and I just want to push the point a bit because what you're saying is if you've got a lot of investors and you've got offtake partners, they have ESG front of mind, correct? Absolutely. When we're speaking to offtake partners at the moment, there are a number of the offtake partners who that is the first hurdle. They want to see what our ESG uh, credentials are. They want to see what our plans are. They want to see it in very concrete terms. And that's the first piece of their due diligence before they start looking at the the financials uh, of the project. So it's it's an essential part of securing funding for us. I think that's fascinating and a lesson for you know everyday investors as well. Okay, so moving away from this today, we understand, um, I suppose, where this is coming from and why. Um, is there any more funding likely from the government first before we move on to the bigger picture? Well, obviously, we would love that. We have received uh, late last year funding from the New South Wales government for this project as well to help us with some of the early works. So we're, we're conscious of the fact that you know both the state and federal governments have been very supportive. But we are waiting with eager anticipation to hear uh, the minister's release of the critical mineral strategy, which is expected later this year. Uh, because I think, you know, much as these monies are super helpful, you know, these are very significant capital projects, these critical, uh, critical minerals projects. And our project total capex is, uh, you know, 1.7 billion. So while six and a half million is very helpful for us at the moment, it's not going to be enough to get the project into production. So, you know, what those broader industry policy um, policies are to support the industry really getting into operation, uh, we're hopeful we're going to see more. Okay, what are you advocating for then, Rowena? Well, you know, what we would love to see is that the government is actually not just prepared to help with introductions, which they are already very active in across uh, partner jurisdictions, um, and uh, but we're also hoping to see an increased purse, I guess, uh, to access support for funding for debt for these projects uh, because 
um, you know, they are of national importance that these projects actually come into operation. And we're also hopeful that we will see a participation in equity in these projects, at least to some extent. It will send a very strong message to our international investors if these projects are projects that the Australian government is prepared to really participate in. Rowena, what is the big vision? Um, because we've got all these, these critical mineral plans being laid out. We've got so much of a conversation about, um, you know, mineral security, so securing our own supply. But for what? Is it just to dig it out, sell it off uh, to offshore entities primarily? Or, or, you know, are you also interested in value add? Absolutely. I think, you know, certainly if I speak for ASM, you know, we're very committed to doing as much downstream processing here in Australia as possible. And the Dubbo project, we do mine it, but actually the mining is the smallest component of the investment in Dubbo, where uh, we're building a large refinery there as well, which will separate and refine the ore into nine different products. And then some of those products we're taking all the way through to a highly refined oxide, um, but other products we're actually taking all the way through to metal there in situ in in um, in Dubbo. And then what we're also doing, because our strategy is to take the product all the way from mine through to metal and the alloyed metal that is actually the feedstock into the magnet producers. So we have uh, also developed our own technologies to be able to metallize those oxides We've built our first metals plant already in Korea. That's already in production. We're producing now using other third-party feed as we speak. Um, but you know what we're really interested in as we talk to Dubbo offtake partners and investors is, you know, how would they like to take their product? Because yes, we can give it to them as an oxide, but we would prefer to continue downstream and give it to them as that alloyed metal. And, you know, do we invest in the metallization expansion in Korea or would they want us to replicate that plant in their own jurisdiction? Or potentially, would we expand Dubbo further and put it in situ in Dubbo?